I'm reading this really excellent book called Decoding Greatness. I've done a few videos on it in the past. It's about like creativity and skill development and things like that. And in one of the chapters on, I think it's called Practicing in Three Dimensions, the author makes a really interesting point. He, he mentions like professional athletes and how, you know, over time as they practice something over and over again, um, in order to develop, to develop skill, there's a problem. And the problem is they develop what's called automaticity, which is basically like it becomes automatic and, and they think about it less than they did when they were just starting off. And, you know, in some sense that's good because you want to develop muscle memory for complex tasks so that less of your brain has to, less of your conscious mind has to focus on the action and you can free up your thoughts and your focus for other things like, you know, if you're trying to dribble down the course, you can focus on, you know, what the opponents are doing rather than the actual act of dribbling, that kind of thing. And so he was saying like really high level people, like he mentioned Stephen Curry and Michael Phelps, what they will do is when they're, perform when they're practicing, they will introduce um, things in their practice that, are way that make it way more difficult than what they would find or what they would expect to find in competition. Um, I think he mentioned like with Stephen Curry, he would wear these like artifi or this artificial reality goggles or whatever to like put flashing lights and make it hard to see the court and that kind of thing. Just so that it's like he's practicing in situations that are way more difficult than you would find in a game so that he has to stay super focused on um, the skill that he's trying to develop more so than if it were just like a normal practice. And I, he mentioned Michael Phelps where he would, oh, his coach would have him like practice in the pool in total darkness so that, you know, one time, and this actually happened, he was at the Olympics and his goggles got flooded with water and he couldn't see, but because he had practiced in these adverse conditions, he was still able to perform. This explains why I'm bouncing this ball. You know, and I thought, wow, this is a really excellent point. And instead of just talking about it in the security of my apartment, you know, with like my washer and dryer behind me and all my other videos, I was like, I should get way out of my comfort zone, film this outside in public where people can see me, this like dude acting like a fool in a field, bouncing a ball on a tennis racket with a selfie stick. And I was like, this is good because then by doing something that's way more difficult than normal, it might make the normal things seem not nearly as difficult. Cause I was like, I think this is my 59th video and I've pretty much become an expert at producing mediocre videos. I mean, almost as naturally as I breathe, I can produce a video that will get like three views. I mean, it's just laughably easy for me now. So I was like, this is not good. I've developed automaticity for producing mediocre videos. So I have to like introduce hardship um, in my routine so that I can refocus my skill, so that I can be even more skilled at producing mediocre videos. Because one can never settle, particularly when one's goal is absolute mediocrity. So instead of talking about this, this idea of introducing hardship into your practice routine so that you can maintain conscious focus on developing skill, I figured the best way to do it would be to demonstrate. And this is absolutely out of my comfort zone. And maybe in future videos, when I again do them in my apartment, it will be not nearly so hard talking to the camera as it has been recently. So uh, Decoding Greatness is an excellent book. Um, this has been a good experience. Uh, I'll be doing more videos. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, have a great day. Uh, thank you.